I'm just going to say it. Your training stinks. What is that smell? Yes, you. I see you at the range every week for years. Two to 300 rounds down range, and it's always the same thing. Pow, pow, pow. As if a violent attack will happen that way with one attacker standing still and just waiting for you to shoot him or her. What the fuck do you mean that's not how it works? If going to the range is just for therapy and protecting yourself isn't a priority, this is not directed at you. But if you consider yourself an experienced gun owner and self-defense is a priority, it's time to step it up. A well-planned range session with 50 rounds can better prepare you than two to 300 rounds of the same boring routine that adds up to nothing more than a therapy session and a false sense of security. So if you want to improve your self-defense skills in less time and with less ammo, here are five must-do drills you ought to learn, to execute properly, and practice regularly. Yep, that's why I wanted to stay regular. Please make sure to abide by the universal firearm safety rules at all times and perform safety inspections before and after your session, as well as between drills. Drill number one, two yard accuracy test. Use 10 rounds and a three by five index card. It's a great warm up drill that tests your fundamentals and accuracy at different distances. Start at two yards, shoot two rounds into the index card. If successful, repeat at four yards, then six, eight, and 10 yards. Do not move onto the next distance until you have two consecutive shots inside the card. You can use any target and one large enough that if you miss the index card, you're able to see where your shots landed so you can analyze and work to correct them later. I don't make mistakes, I'm perfect. Oh. This drill is useful for when you must make a precise shot under pressure, such as in a hostage situation, for example. Drill number two, one-handed shooting. Use 10 rounds and an eight by 11 piece of paper. Shoot five rounds into the paper with your strong hand and five rounds with your weak hand. Depending on your skill level, choose a distance of three yards and up. That's far enough. If you can only use one hand to defend yourself, you want to know well in advance how your gun feels and performs when shooting with either hand. Drill number three, up one drill. Use 10 rounds and an eight by 11 piece of paper at three yards and up. If you have a shot timer, use it. In my humble opinion, it is one of the most important drills you ought to learn. Start at either low ready or high compressed ready. At the sound of the beep, shoot one unsighted shot into the target. Stay extended for two to three seconds with your finger on the trigger. Then place your finger on the slide and withdraw back to low ready or high compress ready. Perform 10 times. Unsighted means that if you don't manage to align your sights as you raise or extend the gun towards your target, you must fire the shot anyway as quickly as possible. Hey, don't rush me, man. To be clear, as quickly as possible in the context of firearms means as quickly as you can perform the drill safely and get a shot on target. The reason you stay extended and ready is to assess whether the threat is over or still active, and if a follow-up shot may be required. Drill number four, clearing malfunctions. There are two drills I will cover here. I will refer to them as 4A and 4B. 4A, the tap rack bang. Oh, that sounds like fun. Use five rounds, an eight by 11 piece of paper, and a dummy round if you have one. Start at the distance you are comfortable with in a low ready or high compress ready start position. Place a live round in the magazine first and a dummy round on top of it. You want your first shot to be a click and your second to be a live one. If you don't have a dummy round, leave the chamber empty for your first shot. Perform this drill the same way you perform drill number three, only this time your first shot, the click, simulates a malfunction. To clear this malfunction, tap the magazine once, rack the slide fully to eject the dud, and resume shooting. Perform five times. 4B, the double feed malfunction. Use five rounds, an eight by 11 piece of paper, and a dummy round. With the slide locked open, place the dummy round in the chamber. Place a live round in the magazine. Insert the magazine and attempt to close the slide. The live round will now be stuck behind the dummy round to set up a double feed malfunction. A double feed often occurs after a tap rack bang. The round or empty shell failed to inject, so the follow-up round could not load and got stuck behind it. To clear it, Lock the slide back. That relieves the pressure between the two cartridges and makes it easier to remove the magazine. Rack the slide three times to eject the dummy round and clear the chamber. Reinsert the magazine, rack the slide to load a round in the chamber, and resume shooting. Perform five times. And drill number five, 
the emergency reload. Well, you might not think it's a big emergency, but trust me, it is. Use 10 rounds, two magazines, and an 8x11 piece of paper. Any distance will do. Insert an empty magazine into your pistol and rack the slide. It should lock open, as it would after you shoot your last round. Place the other magazine on the table in front of you. Aim at the target as if you were already shooting at it, and now are out of ammunition and must reload. Remove the empty magazine by letting it drop and insert the new one. Close the slide by either pulling it back and releasing it, or by pressing down on the slide release button and resume shooting. Before, 10 times. It isn't often as a civilian that an emergency reload is called for. However, it is one skill I see fumbled and poorly executed more than any other. So if you fumble and screw it up in a controlled environment such as the range, you're definitely screwed under the pressure of a real attack. Please don't put that kind of pressure on me. So spend some time on it, both in dry fire practice and at the range. And there you have it. 50 rounds that covered some of the most important basic self-defense skills we all ought to be able to perform at a decent level if we are to call ourselves experienced gun owners. You can certainly do more repetitions if you have the time and ammunition, but make sure you are performing these techniques correctly and safely. Quality is far more important than quantity here. Hell, why not? Everyone wants quality. If you don't know how to perform these drills safely, please seek the guidance of a certified instructor and learn to do them right for your sake and ours. It will be one of the best investments you can make. If you enjoyed this video, please smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and watch the next video right here. Train hard, often, and safely, and I'll see you at the range.